welcome back. My name is Harkiran Singh and I volunteer with Reset, a nonprofit STEM organization which gets kids excited about STEM through hands-on activities. And today we're going to be doing a coding activity on Scratch. So Scratch is a coding platform developed by MIT students, which provides a good foundation for learning code through code block style coding. And today we're going to learn how to make a game. So go ahead and go on to scratch.mit.edu and let's click the create button. All right, while that's loading, we're gonna go ahead, click out of these tutorials. We're also gonna get rid of the sprite. And so today we're gonna be making a game where we're gonna make the sprite look like it's flying and the sprite is also going to be collecting a certain object and whenever it touches the object um, our score will go up by one. So let's go ahead and pick our flying sprite. I'm just going to go simple. I'm going to go with cat flying and then after that I'm going to choose a backdrop, choose a boardwalk. Alright so now we got the cat we want to make it look like um, it's flying. So we're going to go to events. In order to initialize the code, we got to click and drag. <clears throat> when the green flag is clicked, we're going to go to the purple button called looks and scroll down a bit to find the go to front layer button. And then now we're going to have our sprite say something. So Instead of saying hello for two seconds, we're going to have it say time to fly. Two exclamation points because a cat is really excited. <laughs> All right, and now we want the cat to move up, down, left, and right according to the up, down, left, right arrow keys. So how we're going to do that is by going to events. <clears throat> we're going to click and drag when the space key is pressed and we're going to click and drag that three more times for each of the arrow keys. And so you can kind of think of this as like um, as like a graph. And if you see over here for the x coordinate, in order to move the sprite from left to right, you have to change the x coordinate. And in order to move <clears throat> the sprite up and down, you've got to change the y coordinate. So as you can see, the x coordinate right now, um, the cat is at the position negative 118 and 68. Um, the cat is on the left hand side of the screen, which means that the x value is going to be a negative value. And a negative value, just to recap, is a number which is less than zero. And I'm going to use those terms, um, positive number and negative number. And the y value since the cat is a little bit above on the top of the screen, it's going to be a positive value. So let's kind of experiment with this a little bit. So right now the x value is negative, but when I move it over, it changes to a positive number. And now let's experiment with the y. So right now the y value is positive, but as soon as I move it below the zero uh, value, it changes to a negative number. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what the x and y values are doing right now. So when the space key is pressed, we do not want that. We want when the up arrow key is pressed, when the down arrow key is pressed, when the right is pressed, and when the left arrow key is pressed. And under those, we're going to go to motion, and we are going to do, let's do the right and left first. So in order to move right, like I said, in order to move right, um, our cat is kind of going in a positive direction. So therefore we're changing the x value by a positive 10. And in order to move left, we're going to change the x value by a negative 10. And same concept with the y. In order to move the cat upwards, you want to, oh, sorry, wrong block, change y by 10 in order to move upwards, 
and we're going to change y by negative 10 in order to move down. So let's test this out. It says time to fly. And if I click the down arrow key, it moves down. Up arrow key, it moves up. Right, it moves right. And left, it moves left. Perfect. Alrighty, so <clears throat> after our cat, we're going to go ahead and see we're gonna go ahead and grab a sprite um, for to put it on the bottom of the boardwalk so what I'm gonna do is get the city bus and we kind of want to make the city bus looks like look like it's going from the left of the screen to the right of the screen so it looks like the cat is flying Oops, sorry about that Alright, so in order to do that, we're going to go back to events, when the green flag is clicked, and we want the bus to look like it's moving forever, so we're going to go to the control button over here, click and drag the forever um, button, and we're going to go to motion, and we want to set our x value of the bus to negative, um, let's see, negative, Okay, that looks like it's maximum. So we're going to set x to negative 200. Awesome. And now we want our bus to look like it's moving to the right. So hopefully you're kind of saying in your mind, um, oh, we should change x by a positive value. So we're going to go back to control. Go ahead and click and drag that repeat button. And 10 is too little of a number. Let's do 100. And we are going to go back to motion. And we're going to change our x value by 10. Okay. Let's see how that works. So the bus kind of looks like it's moving from the left to the right. And in order to make it look like the sprite is flying, um, we obviously want more than one bus. So let's go to costumes. And yep, we have city bus A and city bus B. Let's add a car, maybe. Let's add a car. So I'm gonna go to the search button, type in car. Let's get this nice purple convertible. Ooh, all right, now let's get another car. And let's get the other convertible. All right, so we have all four of our cars. And in order to tell our code to switch to the next car, what we're gonna do is go to looks and click and drag the next costume button. Let's test that out. Okay. Awesome. So it changes to a different car. Perfect. So. The next thing we want to do is bring in some clouds for some scenery. Oops, not backdrop. We are going to go, let's stop this for now. Go back to choose a sprite and we are going to grab the clouds. Perfect. And I'm just going to set it over here. So the clouds, um, <clears throat> we're going to code it and it's going to kind of be the same concept as the cat flying code. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, the city bus code. So once again, we're going to go to events. When the green flag is clicked to initialize that code, and we want the clouds to look like they're moving uh, forever. So we're going to go to control, click and drag that forever button. And then we want our clouds to be on the top half of the screen. So the value of that is going to be from um, 30 to 180. I just picked 30 because if we pick zero, I think the clouds would run into the car and I don't want that to happen. So we're going to go back to motion and we are going to set our Y value first. So set Y to, and instead of 130, we're going to do something special. We're going to go to the operators button over here and don't worry, they're not complicated at all. Um, we're going to click and drag the pick random value from 1 to 10. We're going to change that up a bit. Like I said, we're going to move it from 30 to 
180. And now this is just going to keep the clouds on the top half of the screen. And then we also want our clouds to move from left to right, just like the car is. So we're going to set our x value to negative 250. And then we also want a change of clouds. And you see we have all these costumes. We're going to go to looks. And we're going to click and drag the next costume button. And we don't want the clouds to stay in one place. So we're going to have the clouds move in a positive x direction. So we want that to happen multiple times. So we're just going to go ahead, click and drag the repeat button. And we'll leave it at 10. 10 is OK. Let's go to motion, change x by. And 10, if you test this out, um, it's kind of too short of a distance. So I picked 40. And I also feel like the cloud is just moving <laughs> insanely fast. So I'm going to put a wait time. So we're going to go to the control button over here and click and drag the wait. And one second is way too long. Um, <laughs> the cloud looks really funny right now. So we are going to change it to 0 0.1. This just gives us a very slight delay. But as you can see, the cloud is pretty much moving the same speed as a car, which is what we want. All right. So now we have our background established. And now we're going to go ahead and create the game portion. So let's go ahead and grab, um, let's get some balloons. We want the cat to, oh, one thing I forgot. <laughs> go to the cat flying, and we are going to flip this cat around. And we're going to do that by clicking the flip horizontal button. Awesome. Now it looks more like it's flying in the right direction. So we're going to go back to balloon 1 and 100 is too big. Let's make this 50. And then we're going to go ahead and click and drag another balloon. Oh sorry, pick another balloon. Just because one balloon is never enough. And let's change this to 50. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the balloon to purple. I'm going to move the cat over a bit. All right, let's go ahead and work on our balloons. I'm going to go back to code. And what we're going to do first is have the balloon move in random places across the screen. So we're going to go to events. When the green flag is clicked, and we want to make it look like it's moving forever. So we're going to click and drag that forever block. And what we're going to do is go to motion. We're going to click and drag the fourth command, go to random position. And like I said, we want the balloons to look like they're moving from left to right. So same concept. We are going to set the x value to negative 250. Negative 250. Awesome. And now we want this to repeat. Um, we want it to move to the right. And like I said, we want to change x by a positive value. Change x by... 10 is too little, let's make it 15. Perfect. So let's turn this off. Awesome. So now we have our balloon moving from the left to the right hand side of the screen. You know what, let's make this a 30. How does that look? Oh, that is really fast. <laughs> that's really fast, but that's fine. All right, let's go to control. And I'm going to put in the same wait time, 0 0.1. We'll see how that fixes it. Okay, that fixes it a bit. All right, we don't want it going too fast, otherwise we can't get points. So this code, I'm just going to copy it into our second balloon. So events, when the green flag is clicked, once again, we want it to move forever. We want it to go in a random position. We want to set x to negative 250, making it start at the left side of the screen. 
and then we want it to repeat um, going to the right hand side of the screen. All right, cool. And now we're going to change X by change X by I think I did 30 last time. Yep, 30 and then we also put in a wait time just so it becomes easier for us to catch those balloons. Perfect, let's put in 0 0.1 wait time. Awesome, so now we have both of these balloons hopefully moving. Awesome, they're both moving. So now we're gonna put in a point system and how we're gonna do that is by going back to events, when the green flag is clicked, and we're gonna create our own variable. And we're gonna go to the orange circle and we're gonna click make a variable. I'm gonna type in score. Perfect. So now we're gonna set our score to zero by clicking the drop down menu and clicking on score. And we want um, to go to control, click and drag a forever loop here, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So we're gonna be using something called conditional logic. So conditional logic is try to explain it in simple terms. Conditional logic is if whatever condition is met in the hexagon over here, then whatever is inside of this space will, um, will happen. So basically, if something occurs, then something will happen. So we're going to go to the sensing operator. So if the balloon is touching the cat, the flying cat, then our score will increase by one. So change score by one. Awesome. And if we don't put in a wait command, then your score will change by like 50 or some insane number. So we're going to leave that one. And we're going to do that for the next balloon. Oh, wow. Sorry. So once I set, once again, um, we're going to go back to variables. Set. What keeps happening? I'm so sorry. We're going to set our score. We're going to set our score to zero. <laughs> Sorry for the difficulties that were there. We're going to go back to control, grab that forever loop, put it down there, use our if and then conditional logic again. I don't know what's happening with my computer. Oh. <laughs> grab our if and then conditional logic and we're going, going to go back to sensing if the balloon is touching if the balloon is touching the flying cat then we're going to change the score by one once again we're just going to click that drop down menu and change the score by one and then we're going to add our last button wait one second and let's test it out. All right. Okay. Awesome. We can see the score playing already. Or <laughs> we can see the score increasing already. And if you're wondering why we did the set score to zero, I'll show you why. So whenever we click the stop button, start, it restarts our score. So that is how you do the make it fly um, game. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I'll see you next time. Thank you.